bar <coughs> barbershop conversation guys feel free hit the subscribe button so we had some fun last night on my live we going live nine between nine and ten every night on barbershop conversations make sure you guys are a part of it we had a historic live yesterday which leads me to the topic to motherfucking today but before i get into the topic make sure you guys subscribe hit the like button notification button on this channel and <laughs> you know what i'm tired of bud crawford fans saying he fought gamboa don't you know he fought gamboa june 28th 2014 five and a half years ago y'all no longer can you use him as a reference point when saying he fought the best of the best now let's jump right into this shit dog i got the top 10 things that happened in 2014 when terrence crawford fought gamboa number 10 <laughs> keith one time thurman was still injured <laughs> Number nine, Kenny Porter was still training Earl Spence. <laughs> Number eight, Timothy Bradley was black. <laughs> Number seven, Andre Ward truly believed Ward Kovalev was about race. <laughs> Number six, Barry Hearn murdered Nat Turner because he rebelled against slave contracts. <laughs> Number five, Oscar De La Hoya hired RuPaul as his fashion and sexual consultant. <laughs> Number four, Floyd Mayweather needed his black fans. <laughs> Number three, in 2014, Earl was training with Blu-ray Fitness. <laughs> and number two, in 2014, Bo Mac still couldn't fit Crawford draws. <laughs> and number one. The number one thing that happened in 2014. Terrence Crawford gave his last interview with black media. <laughs> 2014. Listen, let me tell y'all niggas something. I'm no more can we mention Terrence Crawford versus Gamboa. The shit happened five and a half years ago, okay? One... Earl Spence wasn't even a prospect yet. He had just left the Olympics two years prior. So you mean to tell me Terrence Crawford had a half a career head start on, on Earl Spence and still didn't become a bigger star than him? Come on, y'all. That's, that's bad management. That's bad leadership. Whoever is in charge, cut the bullshit out. We cannot mention Gamboa anymore. All we care about right now is what Terrence Crawford does at 147. Right now, he's fought Amir Khan, Jeff Horn, Amir Khan, Jeff Horn, and I don't know the other guy. He's fought somebody. Who was, oh, and uh, Jose Benavidez. He hasn't even fought an American yet. Well, Jose Benavidez being an American. How about you put him in the ring with some Americans? So have some name recognition. You understand? He done fought Amir Khan, who has a who has a fake fan base, has his fake popularity over here. Jose Benavidez would have been a formidable opponent if he had two legs, you know. And Jeff Horn, you know, everyone beats Jeff Horn, you know. Every top eight welterweight beats Jeff Horn. You understand what I'm saying? And, and my humble opinion, for Manny Pacquiao won that fight. So at the end of the day, no more, all right? No more, please. No more, all right? No more. No more can we mention Gamboa. York is Gamboa. The motherfucker that revitalized his career. Remember, he lost two or three in a row. About two years ago, he couldn't win a fight. Remember, he was with Golden Boy and couldn't win a fight. Golden Boy released him because they thought he was done. You know, so at the end of the day, man, that was five and a half years ago, man. That's like a drug dealer talking about how we had, uh, how we had that, uh, that 318 BMW. You know what I mean? Or that pimp, that 65-year-old former pimp who's, who used to brag about uh, having six or seven women. Or the high school quarterback, you know what I mean, who's bragging about how he used to get all the girls and had to find this girl at prom. It's over. All right? It's over. Terrence Crawford, what have you done for boxing lately? 
All right. Why don't you beat Earl Spence to the punch, top rank, Terrence Crawford, and go get Sean Porter? How about you put in a competitive offer where Sean Porter has to make a decision? Nah, y'all don't want to do that. Bob Arum says Sean Porter ain't that good. You know what I mean? Bob Arum says Danny Garcia ain't that good. Bob Arum says Kell Brook ain't that good. Come on, y'all. So everybody ain't that good? You mean to tell me nobody's good at the welterweight division? Anyways, man, I know I'm going to get some death threats. I know I'm about to get some emails. But the truth be told, Terrence Crawford ain't had a big win since 2014. He's had great accomplishments, but not great wins. I repeat, Terrence Crawford has had great accomplishments, but not big, but not big wins in five and a half years. Earl Spence. Earl Spence was two years into his pro career. Imagine that. You get a fucking, you get a fucking five-year head start, four-year head start, and he becomes a bigger star than you. And you had already was a world champion. Something's wrong here. Something is wrong. But you know, I'm don't y'all gonna kill the messenger though. Y'all gonna kill the messenger, right? Y'all want to hear the top 10 again? Y'all want to hear the top 10 again? Then we got the number go work out. Number 10. In 2014, Keith One Shirt Thurman was still injured. Number 9. In 2014, Kenny Porter was still training Earl Spence. Number 8. Timothy Bradley was black. Number 7. Andre Ward but truly believe Ward Kovalev was about race. Number six, Barry Hearn murdered Nat Turner because he rebelled against slave contracts. Number five, Oscar De La Hoya hired RuPaul as his fashion and sexual consultant. Number four, Floyd, in 2014, Floyd Mayweather needed his black fans. Number three, in 2014, Earl Spence was still training with Blu-ray Fitness. Number two, Bo Mack still couldn't fit. Crawford draws. And number one, in 2014, Terrence Crawford gave his last interview with black media. We dropped the mic like in Coming to America. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you guys want to hear me go off, feel free to go to my live I did last night. It was an epic live. Two hours of pure, unadulterated entertainment. You guys will thoroughly love it. Barbershop Conversations. I see you guys tonight between 9 and 9.30. We're going to go live and talk shit some more. Barbershop Conversations. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.